Your first case study in 20th century warfare is the infamous Battle of the Somme of 1916 during the First World War. As you probably know and as you can see from the two maps in front of you, the Battle of Somme took place um, in July 1916 along a 30 kilometre stretch of trench lines in northern France. And the aim of the British and French attack was to achieve a decisive breakthrough of the German trenches um, near the River Somme, which would end the stalemate of the First World War. There are a multitude of programmes out there, uh, film clips, video clips, um, about the Battle of the Somme. Richard Holmes does a really good war walks of the Somme battlefield, which is available on Firefly at school. Um, but there's plenty out there um, to give you the visuals and a bit of a view of the area that you can see identified on the bigger map on your right hand side. So the first phase of the attack at the Somme um, was a massive seven day artillery bombardment of the German trenches and their defences which used somewhere in the region of about 500 heavy guns. And it was hoped that the, the shell fire from the guns would destroy the majority of the German trench defences, cut the barbed wire before the infantry attack began. Now, different shells were used, high explosive and shrapnel shells. In fact, there were 1.7 million artillery shells fired during this um, bombardment. The shrapnel shells were limited in effectiveness against trench defensive and there were simply just not enough high explosive shells being produced at that stage in the war um, that were required in this bombardment. It's interesting also to note that um, as well as the artillery bombardment, in some places along the trench lines uh, chemical weapons were used so poisonous gas was used. There were about 40 places along the um, Somme trenches that were attacked by gas, uh, mostly chlorine, which caused suffocation. Uh, these were released from gas cylinders and were blown by the wind towards the German trenches. On the morning of the 1st of July 1916, there were a series of large explosive mines that had been laid in tunnels dug by the Allies near the German front line trenches. They were detonated um, early on this morning, making huge craters such as the one you see in front of you now. And this really was the signal for the, the start of the attacks. So here we have the main stage of the Somme, which was the infantry attack and an enormous infantry force of about 700,000 men were gathered to be used at the Somme. 120,000 men went over in the first wave at 7.30am. Um, they headed out of the top of their trenches and out into no man's land, um, walking towards the German trenches with backpacks on, quite heavy backpacks too. The infantry were given some limited support from their own artillery in this attack. In some parts of the Somme, a creeping barrage was used. And this is where artillery shells were fired to explode just ahead of the advancing infantry so that the German troops wouldn't be able to operate their machine guns. However, there was poor co coordination between the infantry and artillery and communication difficulties. And this often meant that creeping barrages sometimes got too far ahead of the infantry, which made them a bit useless, or unfortunately in some cases they did cause casualties on, the, on their own side, um, so-called friendly fire incidents. British troops did not achieve the planned swift and decisive breakthrough on the first day of the Battle of the Somme. Some troops achieved their objectives, but most found the German trench defences hadn't been destroyed by the artillery bombardment, the week-long bombardment beforehand, and they simply found themselves walking towards a hail of machine gun bullets. They were under artillery fire, and they were halted by uncut barbed wire that the artillery shells were supposed to destroy. 
infantry losses were awful. Um, you can see by the John Ward quote in front of you now. There were 60,000 British casualties on the first day alone, including 20,000 deaths. 40,000 of the 60,000 were missing, wounded or captured. And this, to this day, remains the highest British losses in a single day of combat. By the 11th of July, most of the German front line had been captured by the Allied troops. So in some ways, there is some territorial success here. However, the Germans did reinforce their lines. And from then on, further Allied progress was minimal and disappointing. The Battle of the Somme, in fact, continued until November 1916. You are starting to see battles now that last for weeks and months, rather than the days that we've seen in previous centuries. There are three areas you need to go on and look at, and I'm going to leave this down to you. You need to, you need to know about tanks and their use at the Somme. They were first used on the 15th of September uh, 1916. You will also need to consider the role of the British commander um, at the Somme, the commander-in-chief of the British Army during the First World War, which was Earl Douglas Haig, controversial character. And as well, you will also have to consider the experience that civilians went through. Um, they were not directly affected by the Battle of the Somme, of course, um, but people back at home did find out about what happened at the Somme and you will need to consider that and look at that um, and, and how that was uh, dealt with. 